If you ever wondered how to start an online fragrance company or really any e-commerce business, check out this video. I have a couple of points that I will talk about that apply to a wide range of products. But specifically in my case, I started a fragrance company with my brother that pre-sold a million dollars worth of fragrance without anybody ever smelling it. One million dollars. And then moved on in the first year, we made about two million, two and a half million dollars with just two people. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, stay tuned and we're getting right into it. However, this will be a long video. So I separated the chapters and you can navigate back and forth. If you ever want to go back to something, feel free to watch the video as often as you want. So get your notepad ready and let's get right into it. Let's acknowledge that starting a fragrance brand or any brand really for that matter, that only sends online and direct to customers can be challenging and rewarding at the same time. But here are a couple of steps that I took to get started. First off, you have to start with some research, identifying potential competitors and their products, as well as the demand for, for example, natural or organic fragrances or synthetic fragrances. Consider also conducting market research through surveys or focus on groups to gather feedback on your concept and your target audience. You can do that by interviewing your friends and family. However, you are always going to get a little bit of a skewed perspective going from that. Partially, when we're going back to Fragrance One and how I started the, the business with my brother, this was basically embedded in a way for the way how we got funding, which was through Kickstarter. Many people don't realize that um, we actually didn't have to go through Kickstarter, but I wanted to specifically for that reason, because that would get us close in touch with people that are willing to pay for the product and then also get that necessary market research for people that are interested in the brand. So keep that in mind. Things like crowdfunding is not only for the money. You get a lot of valuable data. Number two. You should try to develop a unique selling proposition, which is called a USP. That's the separating factor that will kind of set you apart from other brands. This could be a specific ingredient um, or process that you use, a unique scent or a particular target audience. So what is this really? Why should people buy your product? Now, the third point is that you often hear you have to create a business plan. However, I'm not a specifically enthusiastic guy about traditional business plan. Instead, what I like to do is create a business canvas. This is a one pager that basically shows your entire business, the revenue, uh, the cost, and the assets that you need to get going. But in general, the idea behind this business plan is that it's a document that outlines your business and goals, your target market, your marketing and sales strategies, and financial projections. It is a very good idea, in my opinion, to create a business canvas before you start your fragrance business in order to ensure that you have a clear roadmap for success. And the cool thing about the business canvas is that it's, like I said, one page, and you can use it as a starting point. And then as you go along and as you get feedback, it's very easy because of the structure of the business canvas to change things and to adapt it to what it actually will look like in the end. Because remember, Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Next step, definitely try to obtain the necessary legal and tax paperwork. What do I mean with that? In order to ensure that you are operating legally and in compliance with local laws, I would definitely recommend that you obtain a business license, uh, register your business with the state and local government, and that you need to obtain the necessary permits. You also need to register for state and federal taxes and including sales tax and income tax. Now, depending on your experience in perfumery, you definitely will probably need to find a manufacturer or a perfumer in order to help you create your fragrances. Try to look for someone with experience in fragrances that you want to create, whether this is a certain scent type or scent family or a process like natural or organic fragrances, and be sure to ask for samples and references before you work with them. However, here's the thing. One thing you will notice really quickly as a newbie in the business, many big companies don't even answer the phone call or return you any of your emails. So you definitely have to be smart about how you want to be working with certain manufacturers. However, there are cool solutions. And one of the guys 
that I interviewed on my Sense with Benefits podcast. I will link it right here. Um, he's a guy that has a turnkey company that's called Dynamic Blending out of Utah. And these guys will help you with all your fragrance needs. And they the most important thing is that they have very low order quantities. So it's very easy to get going and see if you want to take this to the next step. One of your next steps in your fragrance business journey would be to build a website and online presence. Your website will be the primary way your customers learn about and purchase your fragrances. So it's important to create a professional and user-friendly website specifically for today's day and age where you have to focus on mobile. You can consider hiring a web designer or using a website builder to create a visually appealing and easy to navigate site. However, in my experience, these days, it's so easy when you just work with Shopify, which is already a e-commerce platform. They have the integrated website builder and it's really drag and drop and really easy to do by yourself. So no need to spend additional extra money until you want to go to the next step and branch out. Next up, I think you need to focus on marketing and selling your products because once you have your website and your products ready, it's time to start marketing and selling. However, consider that one of my golden rules for starting any business is that you have to start with the audience first. So if you don't have an audience by yourself, I think this should be almost like the first step. Try to create something where people either follow you or know you and you have maybe a newsletter in my case, it was my brother who had a huge following and that is the customer base that we can send things out and they can decide whether or not they like to give it a try. Starting at this stage with a marketing and sales campaign is a little bit late for my taste. However, I needed to put it in there because the other things are obviously, you, it's kind of like a chicken and egg. But if you can try to build an audience way beforehand, um, otherwise it's going to be an uphill battle. In general, you want to use social media and email marketing Really, email marketing and newsletters, still the king. Maybe you can also use other online channels, like maybe start a YouTube channel. Consider offering promotions and discounts in order to encourage people to try your fragrances. Maybe a starter pack or something that makes it very easy to basically get an intro to your brand. Another point is to consider the intellectual property protection. So here's the thing with fragrance. Um, First of all, if you plan to create a unique fragrance or branding for your business, you may want to consider protecting your intellectual property. This could include registering trademarks for your business name and logos or slogans. However, it's very difficult to and almost useless to try to patent your fragrance formula. Uh, first of all, it's relatively easy to clone your fragrance. So it really depends on making the logo, the business name and the slogans and really the essence of the brand stand out so that people can identify it. And that might be the thing that really keeps them coming back. Granted that your products are valuable enough and the quality is at where it needs to be in order to come back. The thing with fragrances is really forget trying to patent a formula. It doesn't make sense. Um, and there's no way you can enforce that and you're just going to be feeding the lawyers uh, if you want to go down that route. One also underestimated point is that you do have to understand your product liability and the insurance that comes with it. As a business owner, you are actually responsible for the safety and quality of your products. There's a reason why fragrances are classified as hazardous materials. It's really the alcohol content, but also there are many ingredients that are hard to track and fragrances is kind of like you, you're kind of playing with fire in a certain way because you don't really know what you're spraying on yourself. Obviously, when you work with the right manufacturers, they're testing their product and they don't want to have a bad name and reputation and lawsuits, which is why generally you're on the safe side already if you are working with a reputable manufacturer. However, it's always important because you will be named in that lawsuit. And it's always important to keep 
track of your business liability insurance. Overall, starting a business can be a challenging but very rewarding endeavor. So I challenge you to give it a try and at least think about it. And the first step is to do some market research and plan carefully. So you have not much to lose other than a little bit of time. Let me know if you think I left something out. I'm sure there's quite a bit, but I think it's a good starting guide. Also, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And I hope maybe I or some of the other subscribers will be able to answer them. So with that being said, I see you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.